So we have our sandbox now, we have our engine, and the goal with the sandbox, again, is to test things in the engine, but to also drive functionality or stuff we need from the engine. And so as we need it over here in the sandbox, if it's reusable, I want to build it over in the engine project. My first goal is to get a sprite up on the screen, have that sprite move around. In order to do that, I'm going to need some more libraries, something I can draw with. I could use the built-in Windows API. I've been there, done that, don't want to do that. I have chosen to use Qt mixed with OpenGL for this project and I think you'll see that it works out really well towards the end way down the line in the sequence of videos we'll switch to DirectX just so we can see how DirectX works it works a lot like OpenGL there are some differences they're competing technologies but for the most part you'll you'll find the two are extremely similar so if you open your browser and you Google simply for QT you'll find the QT uh, project here QT there's a lot of stuff in here, and they did a really good job building this API. Uh, there's threading, there's file I/O, there's GUI, there's OpenGLs tied into it, that kind of thing. It's it's basically a one-stop shop for most things you want to accomplish. For the beginning, we're just going to use simple UI and also use OpenGL. So if you download, I could go to downloads, and probably by the time you watch this video, this page is going to be a lot different. But you can download the latest version. It's huge. It will fill your hard drive up, up with tons of good stuff if you got the time to go through it do I'm generally not one for downloading a whole bunch of stuff I don't need so what I did is I downloaded it I tore out or extracted most of the stuff I'm gonna start with and then I'll add to it later as we need so I actually only have a few megabyte version of this QT let me show you I'm going to bring up again my my folder here I'm gonna make a new folder I'm gonna call it middleware because this is middleware. This is where I'm going to keep... Qt is not the only library we're going to use off the internet. There's going to be others. I'm going to place it all into this middleware directory. If you're unfamiliar with the term middleware, I found here on Wikipedia. In, in its most general sense, middleware is computer software that provides services to software applications beyond those available from the operating system. And Qt and other libraries we use, we will use, definitely do that. So gonna make this middleware directory. I've actually already placed it onto my clipboard. I have this QT. You can see it's 37.4 megabytes. I'm on a solid state hard drive. And you can see that there's just tons and tons of, of files here. Uh, so it's not necessarily large, but there's just so many files that it takes a while to copy. And there we go. And mo you'll see that most of my middleware is organized this way, and this is a natural organization. I, I take, it, it, this is kind of common, we have the bin folder, it's short for binary, it's where the actual code that will be executed goes. Uh, I have the debug versions of Qt here, I should actually get the release versions in there. We'll start with the debug versions at first. Uh, the include directory, these are all the C++ includes that we'll need. Um, without all the DLLs, you notice going back here, I do not have all the Qt DLLs. If you download Qt and install it, you will see there are several more DLLs. And so my code would break if I included a lot of these things, but we're going to just start with the basics and go from there. The reason I didn't delete all the includes is because it's just not enough to really stress about, and it's a pretty clean folder. Lib is what we link to, okay? And I'll show you that how that works in Visual Studio here in a sec. So let's go back to Visual Studio. I want to get a window up on the screen and show it. So I'm actually going to say int main here int argc char star argv that's an array okay and I hope you're familiar with these if not I'll go look them up I'm not going to explain them here uh, let's see this is oh this is temp cpp huh, see look I just made a mistake I don't want to do it in the engine cpp let me close that let's do it in sandbox game I'm going to paste it there okay I want to be able to say pound include Qt slash Q application. A Q application is the fundamental object or class you need to get started up to use Qt. I want to be able to do that, but I can't include it because Visual Studio, the IntelliSense, it's not set up to look over here. If I go back to Qt and include, there's include, there's Qt and Q application. Whew, scroll down for a while. Q application well it's hiding in here somewhere where is it q there we go q application dot h there we go i want to be able to do that 
But this search path for the include is it's, it's not in my include path. So I need to put this path into my include path. So the way I do that is right click on the game again. I'm clicking properties even though it's off the screen. Sorry about that. Uh, C++ general and we see additional include directories right there. So here is where I can specify um, other places I want the compiler to look for when it comes to includes. So I'm going to hit this. We can literally browse to it. Uh, project files, middleware, QT, include, select folder. But now there's a problem with this. It is tied directly to the way my hard drive structure is. Well, it's not a big deal if I'm working alone, but if I'm working with teams of other developers, so they probably want to structure their folders differently and they don't want to have to come in here and adjust this every time that they do an update from something I did. So the better way to do this is to use the macros again that I showed in a previous video to specify our search path instead. So I'm going to do that. Let's, uh, let's hit macros here and you'll see see there's there's a couple of my macros we could use I'm gonna use projector scroll down here to project or is it project directory and you see this d colon backslash my engine project file sandbox game this path could replace um, this mostly except I don't want to be in sandbox game I want to go up one level into project files right here and then go back down into middleware Qt slash include so I'm actually going to use this projector macro to my benefit. I'm going to come in here and say, all right, project dir, and I believe you can actually double click it down here and it'll insert it. Let's just try it. Can I? No. Whatever. Okay, project dir, it ends with a backslash, so I don't need to add a backslash right here. I want to go up one directory and then go into middleware slash qt slash include. So I'm going to click OK down here off the screen. See the path is there. Click OK. And now you see the red squigglies are gone. So now I can say Q application, uh, application. And the reason I added argc and argv is because Q application will use them if we send them in. So argc, argv, and then I want to return application, oops, application dot, I think it's exec. All right, and exec is our error code that hopefully you're used to returning error, co error codes from main. Uh, let's build this, run this, see what happens. Build failed, of course. Oh! <laughs> What's the problem? We're getting, we're getting linker errors. So, I strongly recommend you go watch the C++ and get comfortable with the C++ playlist. Because I'm making some assumptions that you have, and I'm not going to go through all the details again in this video. I'm going to assume you are familiar with those things so that I can talk on that level in these videos. Uh, what's the linker problem? Well, first of all, if I didn't have my include directory set up correctly, I should have shown you that error uh, before I did all this. So let me actually go here, edit. I'm going to highlight all this, cut it so I don't have to remember it. Click OK. I've taken that path out of my out of my uh, search list. I'm going to hit Control shift b build, and I'm looking for a real error. This is IntelliSense having personal problems. I want a real compile error. Error cannot open include file qt slash q application, no such file or directory. So, if you remember, there's three steps the compilation has to go through, compilation unit has to go through. There's the preprocessor, and then it goes through the compiler. Okay, I'll type that in there. This should be familiar, though, from the C++ videos. And then it has to go to the link stage. Okay? Well, right now the preprocessor is freaking out, saying I can't find this file, so we're not even getting the compilation. The preprocessor needs to include this file, copy and paste it directly here into my CPP file. Uh, but we're not even, we haven't even given it the path. So let's go back. I'm going to add that path back in here. Go over here to home, paste it, semicolon, enter, enter, build. That error goes away, but now we got this link error. All right? Link is saying, hey, um. Uh, I can't find the actual code for this. I don't need to patch up these symbols in the in the compilation unit, but I can't I can't find where the actual symbols are. Where do you want me to take the code when you when you call this constructor when you call exec? I I have no idea where to patch those calls to where where to make execution go. And so we have to tell the linker. Oh, by the way, this is where you need to make those execute it. That's where you need to make execution go 
when that comes up. So let me bring this back up. We got through the compile stage, but then the, then the linker choked. So we need to tell the linker where to find this stuff. Well, let me go back to this folder here. I'm going to go to Qt, erase that off the screen. Um, here's lib. We link to lib files. And application exec is in Qt core d4.lib. The d is for debug. This is the debug version of the library. And the 4 is I'm on Qt4 in this video. So there's two steps I need to take for the linker. One, I need to tell the linker what file to use. Okay, we'll use OpenGL soon enough. But we're going to use Qt Core. Well, for the, just to get this going, I need a link to Qt Core. And I also need to tell the linker where to find Qt Core 4.lib. So let me, let me go over here, right click properties, uh, linker. Let's collapse this. General. First of all, let's tell it, hey, um, by the way, we need to use Qt Core D4.lib. Okay. And the reason why I'm using the debug version, um, because it's good for debugging. How about that? But then also we're set to debug here, so I'm, you can link debug to non-debug and back and forth like that, but I'm just trying to keep some consistency here. So I wanted to use this file. I'm going to click OK, build it, and the linker will choke again saying, hey, uh, you told me to use this file, but I can't open it. Where am I going to find it? Well, you're going to find it over, going to find it right here. All right, so we got to tell the linker to look there as well. Right click, properties again off the screen, general, additional, Library directories. This looks a lot like our additional include directories we saw with the include part of C++. So additional library directories. Well, I could hard code this out again, or I could, I could use my macros. So let's use my macros. Solution dir. Go up one level. Go into middleware. Oops, I did that with lowercase w. Doesn't really matter, I guess. Qt slash lib. You'll find it there. Enter. Enter. Control Shift B. Oh, we're still getting the linker errors. Why? Offhand, I'm not exactly sure why we got this error up first, but notice that it's not complaining that it cannot find Qt Core D4.lib anymore. It's again, it found the file, it opened it, but it didn't find what I'm trying to link to here. So I wonder, I don't think this is the case, but it might need Qt GUI D4.lib to find this. That's oh yeah, that might be right because Q application. This gets the GUI message pump going. Duh, I knew that. Let me go to properties here. And input, and I'm going to say qt gui d, whoops, gui d4.lib, semicolon, enter, enter, build, build succeeded, that's right. Okay, this, I should have known better. Q application, uh, this starts our Windows message loop, if you would, or message pump, and so that's why it's in the gui. Now I could take the qd4.lib out, in fact, Maybe just for now I will, even though I know I'm going to need it later. I'm going to keep this clean. Get rid of that. Enter. Build. Build started. Build succeeded. Let's run it. Control F5. Oh, look at this. Now this is the part where a lot of new programmers get confused. There's DLL files and there's lib files. I'll bring this back on the screen. You see these lib files? These, these are what we link to. And we're using dynamic linking, which means I could, in theory, delete a DLL, replace it with another DLL, and if, as long as those two DLLs have the same function calls and objects and those kind of things, we call it the interface. As long as the DLLs share the same interface, then I don't have to rebuild my project. This project here that's consuming Qt, I can just replace the DLL, no big deal. So that's called dynamic linking, meaning we're linking literally at runtime, even though we have to make the compiler happy with these lib files. So when I ran it, uh, it executed and said, hey, the actual code for this app.exec is hanging out in this DLL file. I can't find the actual code. So we need to tell it where to find it. There's a way I can do it system-wide, and there's a way I can do it privately just for this project. For this video, I think we're going to deploy it privately just to give you a sense for that, and then later I can show you how to do it system-wide. But for now, it's really cheap and really easy and uh, slightly unmaintainable to do it this way. But I'm going to go to bin, I'm going to grab Qt, GUI D4, copy that, go to project files, sandbox game, debug, that's where my my output for my sandbox game.exe ends up. And so if I just place this DLL right next to it, then it'll find it when I run this exe. So let's try that again. Click, get rid of the console, control F5, that's the same as double clicking on it. And then notice, 
we get a different error. Qt core dot d four dot dll is missing. Why is it, why is it looking for Qt core d four dot dll when I'm using uh, the GUI, just Qt GUI? Well, it turns out that some of the stuff in the GUI is relying on Qt d four Qt core d four dot dll. So I'm consuming the GUI part, but then the GUI part later on down in its library is trying to rely on Qt core d four dot dll. So Again, the uh, slightly unmaintainable way of doing it. Uh, go to the bin here for Qt. I'm going to grab core as well. Copy uh, my sandbox game debug. I'm going to paste it here. And let's try running this again. Maybe it'll work this time. Control F5. And we get nothing. <laughs> but at least we didn't get any errors. And that's probably a good thing. All right, now you may be wondering... That was weird. You pulled the DLL into the the executable area here, but you didn't link to the DLL for Qt Core D4. Well, that's because on our level here, we're not using QD4, Qt Core D4 directly, but we are using the GUI, and the GUI relies on Qt Core D4. There, uh, eventually, probably very quickly, we'll get to a point where we need to link directly to Qt Core for ourselves, but not yet. And I want to add this stuff incrementally, so hopefully you can see the process we're going through and, and get a feel for this. Get the includes in there, get the linkers happy, and then also make the compilation units uh, work well at runtime, make the executable work well at runtime. This is a good time to commit. So I'm going to build, I'm going to clean this here, and um, did I say it's clean solution? I think I did. Clean solution. Okay. So I don't want the temp. Again, those are temporary stuff. Let's go sandbox game here. Uh, we already committed the project files. So the only thing really I want to add here are these two DLLs. So if I do a checkout somewhere else, I've privately deployed them here. And they're inside of my repo. So I'm going to add these. And I'm going to say, S well, let's go all the way to the top. SVN commit. Uh... Uh, privately copied QT, QT DLL files to executable path. Also, I should do, oh man, I think if I'm doing this on video, I'm going to do a more professional job. Also set up sandbox project. I usually don't, <laughs> I'm usually not too picky about my English in here. Also set up sandbox project to consume the engine project. Okay, save game. Done. Wait for it. We're hopefully it, yep, there we go. Okay, good. Sorry this video is a little long, but I think it's necessary to understand how to set these projects up to work with each other.